Hello and welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to take a look at our actions in order. In other words, how to get one action to happen after another one and how to get two actions to happen at the same time. And we'll talk a little bit about how actions for one object interact with actions or actually don't interact with actions of another object. We're also going to look at a couple new um, actions that we haven't looked at before and see how they also get affected by our uh, order or what we're going to call the pool. So let's dive right in to some code. The first thing we're going to do is what we have been doing is all of our imports and we're going to put in our physics like that. There we go, our random just in case. Our shape so we can make a shape. Um, now all these actions will actually work on any object that we import. You could import a character um, that you create as opposed to just importing a, um, creating a box. Let's talk about um, our actions. But first, we should actually create an action. So let's add in our world. There we go. And let's add in our ground because it's just in case we want to put some gravity in here. We want to have keep our objects on the floor. And we're going to add in our first shape, a green box. OK. And let's talk about uh, order. So the default order is actions for, let's say, this box object will happen one at a time as we add them to the queue. So let's create two actions. Um, let's do our spin forever action. Give it a speed of 90. and say spin forever. And then let's also create an action called fly to point. Uh, and we're going to give this a place to go. Let's go our class this act dot move to. That's our method. And we're going to give it a position 0 comma 0 comma 5. And we're going to give it a speed, let's make it move slow, of 1. OK, so now we're going to add our actions. Oops, fly to point. Now, I put the spin forever second so we could actually see these actions happen in order. If I put the spin forever first, since spin forever is to spin forever, it will actually start that action and then do the fly to point. So it may look like those two actions are happening at the same time when they're really not. So I'm going to do the fly to point first and then go ahead and do our um, add action for the spinning forever. I'm going to also do my grabbable objects just in case we decide we want to go ahead and grab that. Put that down here like that. OK. So we have the grabbable objects like we normally have in our code. Let's start this off. And we'll notice you see the block moving and then it spins. It happens really fast. Let me do this again. That's why I have it moving so slow. See it moves, 
and then spins. So the way Wizard handles that is something called a pool. And a pool is an order to things where one thing happens and then another thing happens. Think of it like a line. So both of these, if I put the variable in, are in pool zero by default. So this is not going to have any effect on the code when I run it. It's just telling Python that this is the line that they're in. And pool zero is the, the line that these two actions are sitting in. And one happens after the other. But suppose I wanted to have two actions happen um, at the same time. So to make this demonstrable, we're going to add in a couple objects. So I'm going to add in, let's say, box zero. Make it a lovely orange. Let's give this an action. We're going to call it fly to point two. Now I have to use a different name. I can't call this fly to point because it's already been used for the other action. I could apply the same action if I wanted uh, to our box zero. I don't need to create a new action. I could just say fly to point and use that on box zero as well as box, but I think I want, I don't want the two moving to each other. And I'm gonna put this in pool zero. Now, before I do anything else, I want to show you what happens here. You'll, you might say to yourselves, oh, so this is going to do add action for box and then the fly to point, the spin forever, and then do box zero fly to point. So the box zero move last, but that's not what actually happens. What's really going to happen is that the orange box and the green box are going to move at the same time. The reason why they're moving at the same time is because the, the pool or the line for each object is separate. So the line for the box is separate than the line for box zero. So we can't get them to move at one and then the other and then do box zero. We have to follow a different way of adding actions in order to make that happen. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and add in a box three, another box. And look at how do we get, uh, we'll do a blue box this time. How do we get our boxes to kind of move and do things at the same time? So I'm going to create two actions. And instead of spin forever, I'm going to use a spin two action. So I'm going to call it spin blue and spin blue one. Two Euler actions. Uh, they take two Euler methods. And this is going to spin the box so it's oriented, instead of being sitting flat, it's going to be oriented at 180 degrees, 50 degrees, 20 degrees in the XYZ axis. So it's really going to be kind of all different kinds of crazy direction. It's going to do all of those motions at a speed of 15. So it's going to move from the current position to this new rotation angle. And then the other one is going to move from the current position to a 90, 0, 0 rotation angle at the speed of 10. Those were those two actions. So let's go ahead and add some actions to our box. So we now have a couple actions created. Box 3 add action. Remember, I got to add the action to the box. I'm going to spin blue one. And I'm going to set that to a pool equal to one. And I could do pool zero, but I'm going to do pool one. And then I'm going to do, oh, I wanted to do one more action. Let me put that in there. Let's do move up. 
This is the new action which I haven't shown you yet. This is not um, a move to action, this is just a move action. So it's going to move it just up at in a direction for a certain amount of time. So we're not these numbers here are not a position. They're a Euler direction. So I'm going to have it move at a speed of 0.1 in the y direction. So this is going up at a speed of 0.1 which is really slow, in the y direction. I'm going to have it move at that speed for 10 seconds. So anybody who's in physics might recognize this as a vector, where we're having something move in a particular direction. I'm not saying don't move for a certain distance. I'm just saying move at that speed in the y direction, 0.1 in the y direction for 10 seconds. OK, so now I got my new action put in there. So we've learned two new actions, spin to and dot move. I'm going to do spin, blue, pull is equal to one. So these two actions will happen in order, one and then the other. However, I'm going to add this third action. I'm going to put it in a different pool. And by putting it in a different pool, this is going to cause it to happen at the same time as the two spinning actions. So I'm going to spin blue one, which is turned to the 90 degrees, then turn to the crazy angle, that's spin blue, in that order. But at the same time it's spinning, it's going to be moving up into the air in the y direction at a speed of 0.1, and it's going to do that for 10 seconds. So let's see how box three. We're looking at the blue box in this display. You can see it. Oh, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Let me take a look. I, oh, I got an error. If is act not defined. Uh, because I use a capital A. There we go. That's a problem. And now you can see the box is going up in the air. The blue box is going up in the air, but it's doing the rotation at the same time. Does the 90 degree rotation and then does that kind of crazy angle rotation. It only moved up for 10 seconds, so maybe we want to make it move up in the air for a little bit longer. Let's do 20 seconds so it can kind of complete the rotation as it's moving up, as opposed to uh, finishing the rotation after it's, our 10 seconds have already elapsed. So the 10 seconds is going. It's just rotating in that 90 degrees axis. And now it does the other rotation, the weird one. And it is still moving. Now notice it's moving in relative to its Y position. So in that last rotation, when it kind of turned direction, it started looking like it was moving off at a weird angle. That's because it's turned at a weird angle and it's moving relative, relative to its y-axis, which is now different than the y-axis of the world. So in fact, let's just get this to move a little bit faster. And for um, a little bit longer. Let's do 30 seconds at a speed of 0.5. We can kind of see that effect. So it's turning. Go way up high. And now we can see it's like flying off above us. You see that? It's no longer just going straight up. Actually, we'll we'll keep we'll slow it down. <laughs> I'll make it move longer than the rotation. Let's do that. I think it went too high. So the first rotation, second rotation, those two are done in order. The whole time it's moving in the y direction. And now you can see that it's kind of flying at us, right? At a, at a 
weird angle going up above us. So there's that idea that it's following its own y direction. Okay, let's have some more fun. Let's go in and add in one more box. And I'm going to use uh, my move to and my spin to. And I'm going to put them both in the uh, add action. But I'm going to put them both in the same pool. So we can see it's going to uh, do this in two different steps. It's going to spin to yaw of 90, uh, which is what we call this sometimes, where we put a 90 degree angle in. Uh, so it's going to spin to that position at a speed of 10, whatever that means. We can make it faster. We saw we could go all the way up to 30,000. Be super fast. And then we're going to move in the uh, z-axis uh, at a speed of 4 for 5 seconds. All right, so let's see how that goes. Box 2, and what color did I make this? Red. So now looking at the red box. And these two actions should happen in order. But again, these actions will start at the same time as every other action in our world. So we can watch our red box is spinning, our orange box is moving, our green box moved, the blue box is moving. And we can see the red box shoots off to the side at a pretty good clip after it's done its rotation. Really shot off there. OK. So now we know um, some ways of getting our objects to move around. Um, let's talk about the grabber action and some things we can do to our actions in order to get them to stop. So I'm going to go in and add in our grabber methods. I'm going to put them right underneath our physics here. There we go. And I got three. I got the first one here I want to look at is when I grab an item, I'm going to call the end action. Now, I could also add in the end action and list which pool I want to end. But when I grab an object, it's just going to stop and end its action. I can also do a clear action list, which means that if there's anything else that's still within the a pool that has not been completed. It just clears those and finishes the current action. And then there's another one called clear actions, which not only ends the current action, but then also removes everything that is in the queue. So we have those three different ways of ending an action. End action kills the current action and executes the next action in line. Clear action list continues the current action but then removes anything else that happens after it. And then clear actions, which kills the current action and removes all actions in the queue. Sometimes it's important, maybe you're playing a game or something, to be able to stop an action. You know, Maybe when you hit a target, it stops spinning or something like that. Uh, I'm just going to keep my on release to be a text message uh, that says dropped. And then I'm going to, actually, you know what? We're not even going to do that. I'm just going to make it a pass because I don't need to have that on the screen. And remember, a pass is some way of holding the place value. Just like I have a pass for on collide, I'm going to hold the place value. So that way, both of these methods are there if I want to use them, but I don't have to. I'm going to add in my callbacks. I probably only need to add the one callback, but we're going to add them just for the sake of completion. And I'm going to add them right here. It doesn't really matter where I add them, but I'm going to add them right there after I created my world, kind of keep those things at the top. And now when I grab um, one of my grabbable objects, which I think right now is just the box object, which I think was the, oh, what color was it? The green one. OK. So if I grab the green one, it should stop spinning forever. Right? So let's go ahead and, and do that. Run the code. Got all these different boxes. And I'm going to come over to here to the green box. Grab it. And now the action stopped. The green box is no longer spinning and it won't start up spinning again. It just stops spinning. 
So that is sometimes useful to be able to stop actions and an event like a grab is a great way uh, to do that. We could also use the collide event too, right? That if one box collides with another box, we could do that. Let's put our gravity on for box. Um, let's see. Collide box. I think that's right. Yep. And then it was the green and the orange box that collide. Which was box zero. That's why I did colors so I can kind of keep track of what's what on the screen. Okay. So when they collide, I'm going to say... object one oh, so e dot object one dot and action okay and we're gonna do the same thing for two just because I don't know which is gonna be object one and which is gonna be object two at this point I think if the green is hitting the orange but let's see hopefully I typed everything right and we got this so now watch now you can see, oh, it did not stop spinning. Well, let me try that again. Did I not put it on the right box? Let me take a look. Well, that was silly. I did something silly. Two things. One, I put, <laughs> I put the action on the release rather than on collide. So we wanna make sure that our action is on collide. So we're gonna clear the actions that clears out everything that's in there and stops everything. So basically the green box should not spin. And then the other thing I forgot to do is to enable the notify, the viz.collide notify on those two objects. So I have to put, not only put the collide mesh on there but the viz.collide notify. Now, if you do a collide box, uh, because of the physics, when it, it kind of counts it as dropping and counting it hits the floor as ending all the actions. So basically they don't move at all because that's a collision with the floor. So we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do a collide mesh. And now we can see what happens is the boxes move towards each other, but then the green box never ends up spinning because the two boxes collide. So there's our example of stopping actions using our collision event. So that is all I have for you today. Hope you had fun. I'll see you next time.